here's how it all comes together, Maddie. If you look at the statistics in England, apparently in the last recent history, 90% of the historical artifacts that now sit in museums so the population can see them were found by treasure hunters. Wow. And that's an example of a good policy that works. Not archaeologists, but treasure hunters. Treasure hunters, hunters. yes, not archaeologists. You know, we've spoken a lot here about principled individual behaviors and unprincipled behaviors. But there's a case, a treasure find off the coast of Colombia, a ship called the San Jose. And it speaks eloquently to what happens when governments become unprincipled. What it comes down to, Mandy, is what we learned as kids. Finders, keepers, losers, weepers. Not necessarily true when it comes to treasure hunting. 2,000 feet beneath the waves, off the coast of Cartagena, Colombia, near a sandy spot called Isla del Tesoro, Treasure Island, lie the remains of a once great Spanish galleon, the San Jose, known as the Holy Grail of Shipwrecks. The galleon was sunk after a disastrous naval battle with the British in 1708. But what makes the San Jose particularly notorious is its cargo, an estimated $20 billion in gold, silver, and jewels. And, so far as anyone knows, the vast fortune is still in the ship's watery hold. The San Jose was in Panama looting gold brought up from the west coast of South America, and it was there for a very long period of time, so it stored a lot of gold, along with several other ships. And they all sailed for Cartagena, Colombia at the same time. San Jose would have carried gold, would have carried silver from the mines of Potosi, would have carried emeralds. The British government was aware of this fleet and engaged in a battle which resulted in the San Jose being targeted and hit by several shots from the British ships and ultimately exploded and sank. For nearly 300 years, one of the largest treasure hoards ever to set sail was lost, but never forgotten. In 2015, maritime archaeology consultants contracted with the Colombian government and the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, the same organization that located the remains of the Titanic in 1985 to find the wreck. One of the men on board when the hunt began was Woods Hole research engineer Jeff Cayley. An expedition of this scale is incredibly complex, and it really comes down to having a really good team. Our team was archaeologists. We had researchers from Woods Hole, members of the Colombian government, all bringing their specialties together, where any one of those components by themselves wouldn't have been successful. It really was a huge collaborative effort. Our first mission in the summer of 2015 was successful at finding where the San Jose was not. And then later that year, at the end of 2015, we had a second expedition, which was successful in finding the San Jose. But finding the San Jose was not the end of this treasure hunt. It was only the beginning. So there's an interesting thing about this. Even if we know that the treasure is there, whose is it? Spain wants it because it was a Spanish galleon that sunk. Colombia says it's theirs because it's in their waters. Then again, it was taken from the Incan Empire. The Colombian government, because it's in Colombian waters, probably has the strongest claim to the wreck, which I'm sure has the strongest claim. They also have the biggest navy down there. Well, they have the biggest gun, so they make the rules. And then you have Spain, who's saying, well, it was our ship, but it's our gold. We stole that fair and square. The San Jose is one of the most sought-after sunken treasures in history. But a protracted legal fight has, so far, prevented those who discovered the ship's whereabouts from recovering its precious cargo and profiting from their labor. Quite literally, we're talking about billions of dollars in, in treasure. I really can't see any of the parties that are going to be willing to just throw in the towel on this. 
At the same time, more treasure, the more trouble. The most profitable part of the San Jose is the lawyers. From the day after it sank, lawyers have been making money in the San Jose. That's the truth. But there is one force that is more powerful than any world government. And it is even more destructive, Mother Nature. While the fight over the San Jose rages on land, the treasure, worth billions of dollars, is slowly dissolving in the warm, salty waters off the Colombian coast. Every day goes by is another day there's less of it. It's the law of nature, it just happens. Saltwater environment is not a conducive environment to man-made objects. I look at it as we're just clearing the ocean floor of previous man's clutter. It doesn't belong there. Let's get it out of there. I mean, do, when you see a story like that, guys, does that give you pause in how you proceed here, who you deal with? Well, who we deal with, certainly. You try, you always try and find people of integrity. I mean, how, how do you know, you know? Right. Rick and I have a saying that uh, it, when it comes to shysters, the good ones are, are good. really good. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> they yeah. ooze credibility, yeah. you know, so you have to be on your guard. But, you know, generally speaking, most people are bona fide. Yeah, they're principled. Yeah. And I think good karma attracts good karma, I guess, is one uh, somewhat naive way to say it. But it's true. I mean, if you behave with honor and integrity, it draws people to you. And I lay it at the, at the feet of that principle.